Where do the Danes really come from? For centuries, this has been one of Northern Europe's quiet mysteries. Some say Danes are the true descendants of the Vikings. Others believe their roots stretch far beyond the Viking Age, back to the first farmers, the ancient hunter-gatherers, and the early steppe tribes that once moved across Europe. Now, for the first time, DNA is giving us real answers. And what scientists have discovered is surprising. So stay with me until the end, because we're about to uncover the hidden truths of Danish DNA. And before we dive in, let me ask you a question. Do you think the Danes are pure descendants of the Vikings? Let me know your answer in the comments. When people think about Denmark, they usually imagine a small, peaceful country with one shared history and one shared identity. But when scientists started studying the DNA of the Danish population in more detail, they found something far more interesting. Modern Denmark is not built from one ancient group or one clean genetic line. Instead, it is shaped by thousands of years of movement, mixing, and regional differences that many Danes themselves are unaware of. In this video, we will walk through the parts of Denmark's genetic story. We will look at the deep connection between Denmark and Germany. We will explore how different the mainland is from the islands and what makes Denmark different from Norway and Sweden. Let's begin with something many people outside the region don't realize. Denmark and northern Germany have shared people, land, and culture for thousands of years. The border we see today is recent, and the populations on both sides have mixed for longer than they have been separate genetic studies show that people in southern Jutland have more in common with northern Germans than with some Danes from the islands. This does not mean Danes are Germans, or Germans are Danes. It simply shows how connected the region has always been. Before national borders existed, people moved freely across the peninsula. Families settled on both sides. Farmers, traders, and soldiers lived in the same landscape and shared the same space. Now let's move to another important part of the Danish genetic story. Denmark looks like a small country, but genetically it has noticeable regional differences. The mainland and the islands developed along slightly different paths. People living in Jutland, especially the northern and central regions, carry genetic signatures that reflect a long, stable Scandinavian history. These areas have been shaped mostly by ancient hunter-gatherers, early farmers, and later Germanic-speaking groups. Population movement here was steady, but not extreme. So many ancient lines survived the islands, especially Zeeland, Funen, and Bornholm, tell a different story. These areas were major hubs for trade, travel, and cultural exchange. Over thousands of years, ships and merchants arrived from the Baltic, Poland, the German coast, and beyond. The islands had more interaction with outsiders simply because they were easier to reach by sea. Coastal communities always collect more diversity than isolated inland regions. This does not mean the islands are dramatically different from the mainland. Denmark is still Denmark, but scientists do see slightly more Baltic and Slavic influence in the islands. They also see more variation because cities like Copenhagen grew through immigration and trade. The important point is that Denmark is not one uniform genetic block. Each region carries its own history. When people hear the words Baltic or Slavic, they often imagine modern political categories. But these labels refer to long histories that stretch far beyond current borders. For thousands of years, people from the Baltic Sea region moved through the same waters that connect Denmark to Sweden, Finland, Poland, and the Baltic states. In medieval times, Danish kings ruled territories that touched the Baltic Sea. Copenhagen was part of a major trade network. Merchants, sailors, craftsmen, and workers from many Baltic communities passed through Denmark. Some settled permanently. Others married into local families. Their genetic signature was small but real, and it still appears today. This Baltic and Slavic influence is not dominant. It does not define Danish identity, but it is part of the mosaic. It shows that Denmark was connected to a wider world, not isolated from it. Next, let's discuss something that separates Denmark from the other Scandinavian countries. 
Norway, and Sweden have deep historical connections to the Sami, the indigenous peoples of northern Scandinavia. Sami ancestry is present in certain regions of Norway and Sweden, especially the far north. Denmark, however, does not show this same ancient Sami connection. There are cultural interactions through Viking routes and historical trade, but genetically, Denmark developed along a different path. Because Denmark's geography is centered around the peninsula and the islands, it did not share the same Arctic environment or northern population movements. This difference sometimes surprises people who assume that all Scandinavian populations share the same deep ancestry. But geography matters. Denmark's history is shaped more by Central Europe, the North Sea, and the Baltic than by the far north. At this point, the bigger picture starts to become clear. For many years, there was a popular idea that Scandinavian populations, especially Danes, Norwegians, and Swedes, were extremely homogenous and descended from one ancient group. Modern genetics does not support that idea. Scientists now know that the people of Denmark are the result of many ancient layers. Hunter-gatherers, early farmers, steppe migrants, Germanic groups, and European neighbors all contributed to the population. These groups mixed again and again over thousands of years. They shaped the language, the culture, and the identity of the region. This does not take away from Denmark's Scandinavian roots. Instead, it shows that the foundation is built on many historical chapters, not one. Every population on Earth is mixed in some way. Denmark is no different. The idea of pure blood anywhere is not supported by evidence. What makes the Danish story interesting is how balanced the mixture is. The country keeps a strong ancient Scandinavian core while still carrying traces of the many groups that passed through. This balance creates the identity we recognize today. Now let's look at a few specific regions that scientists highlight because they show unique patterns. Bornholm, this island has more contact with Baltic communities throughout history. As a result, it carries slightly more Baltic signals in its DNA. This is expected for a small island in a major sea route, but it offers a clear example of how geography shapes genetics. South Jutland, as mentioned earlier, people living near the German border share historical and genetic ties with northern Germany. The populations blended long before Denmark and Germany became separate states. This region remains an important example of cross-border continuity. Copenhagen and surrounding areas, the capital region shows more diversity than the rural regions. This is typical for major cities that attract immigrants, traders, and travelers. Over centuries, Copenhagen collected people from across Europe. This does not change the core Danish story, but it adds layers to it. Northern Jutland, scientists often point to this region as having a strong connection to older Scandinavian ancestry. It has fewer outside influences than the islands and fewer cross-border interactions than the south. Finally, we reach the most recent chapter. In the last 100 years, Denmark has welcomed immigrants from many different parts of the world. The numbers were small at first, then grew after the Second World War, and increased again in the late 20th century. Today, many Danish cities include families with roots in the Middle East, Africa, South Asia, and other European countries. Modern immigration adds a new layer to the population, just as earlier migrations added layers thousands of years ago. The change is more visible because it is recent, but the pattern is familiar. Denmark has always been shaped by the movement of people. The story continues, but the foundation remains strong. When we combine these points, we get a clearer picture of who the Danish people are. They are not the descendants of one isolated group. They are the result of many populations coming together across many centuries. The mainland and the islands developed along slightly different paths. Trade brought new influences. Geography shaped movement. Borders came and went. Cities grew and mixed. Rural regions preserved older patterns. The modern Danish identity is built on this blend. It is stable. It is ancient. It is recognizably Scandinavian. But it is not simple. And that complexity is what makes the story worth telling.
If you really want to understand where Danish people come from, you have to go far back, much farther than the Vikings, even than the first farmers who settled these lands. You must go back to a time when Denmark was not even a country. It was simply a landscape, cold winds, rolling ice, empty plains. For most of early human history, Denmark was impossible to live in. The Ice Age covered almost everything. Only when the ice began to melt did small groups of hunter-gatherers move in. These were not Danes, not Germans or Nordics. Scientists can still find tiny traces of those ancient families in the DNA of modern Danes. The first ancestors of Denmark were not Vikings. They were small, scattered groups of hunter-gatherers whose faces and skin tones may have looked very different from the modern Danish look. Around 6,000 years ago, something happened that scientists call one of the biggest population shifts in European history. Farmers arrived. They came from the south, from areas around the Balkans, Turkey, and the Near East. They brought animals, crops, tools, pottery. Modern D-Day DNA tells us a clear story. When these farmers arrived in Denmark, the old hunter-gatherer lineages almost disappeared. The newcomers mixed with them, married them, and gradually replaced most of their genes. In simple terms, the first big wave of Danish ancestry came from early farmers who originally came from outside Europe. This fact still sparks debate. Some people don't like the idea that the foundation of Scandinavian ancestry came from migrants moving north. A couple thousand years later, another surprising group arrived. Today, scientists call them steppy people, or Yamnaya, but they had no written language. All we know is what their bones, artifacts, and DNA reveal. They came from regions north of the Black Sea, what is now Ukraine and southern Russia. Their arrival changed everything again. These steppe groups brought new burial traditions, weapons, possibly early forms of Indo-European languages, and a different genetic profile that still appears strongly in Danes today. This migration was not peaceful. Evidence across Europe shows dramatic population turnover. In many regions, up to 70 to 90 percent of the local gene pool was replaced. Academics still debate why this shift was so extreme. Was it disease? The truth may involve all three, but one point is certain. Modern Danes carry a large amount of steppe ancestry. This ancestry is older than the Vikings or the Germanic tribes. It is the ancestry that shaped much of the early Northern European world. By the time these three ancient groups, hunter-gatherers, early farmers, and steppe migrants had blended together, Northern identity began to form. People started to cluster into communities. Farming became more stable. Tools improved. Seafaring developed. Languages began drifting toward what would one day split into Germanic, Norse, and other branches. This is the part that many people misunderstand. Northern identity did not appear in a single moment. It wasn't created by one tribe or one culture. It was a slow blending, thousands of small events, thousands of marriages and migrations. And this is exactly why modern Danish DNA still carries tiny traces from faraway regions. No population is ever pure. But Denmark's early population was shaped by movement. Modern analyses show small but clear signals of DNA from the Eastern Baltic, the British Isles, parts of Southern Europe, and even areas connected to ancient nomadic groups. For centuries, people crossed the Baltic Sea, moved along trade routes, married into local families, or settled temporarily during rough times. Some Danes today still carry these faint genetic echoes. This is where controversy enters the conversation, because it challenges the idea that ancient Scandinavia was a closed world or a self-contained tribe. The truth is the opposite. Denmark was always connected, even before written history. The Gelling dynasty, often seen as the birth of the Danish nation, did not create Denmark from scratch. Instead, they organized and unified people who already shared centuries of blended ancestry. What they did was more political and cultural than genetic. Recent genetic studies of Viking Age graves revealed something deeply surprising. Not all Vikings were Scandinavian. 
some Viking warriors buried in Norway and Denmark had British ancestry, Baltic ancestry, Sami ancestry, and Slavic ancestry. This doesn't mean Denmark was multicultural in the modern sense. That would be historically inaccurate. But it does mean Vikings were not a single ethnicity. A person could become part of a Viking crew without being genetically Scandinavian. If they joined, fought, and lived the Viking lifestyle, they were accepted. While the Viking raids get all the attention, the real story of genetic change came from quieter movements. Merchants traveling from the Baltic married local Danish women. Craftsmen from the British Isles settled in Danish towns. Refugees from drought or political conflicts found new homes in the north. People moved for work and opportunity. Over centuries, these small acts shaped the population far more than the dramatic battles and voyages. This is something most history videos ignore, but academics emphasize strongly. The biggest population changes usually come from peaceful migration, not war. The history of Denmark itself, from ancient hunter-gatherers and early farmers to Viking seafarers and modern global immigrants, Every chapter has left its mark on the Danish genetic code. If you've enjoyed this journey through the unique DNA of Denmark, let us know in the comments. Have you taken a DNA test and discovered some Danish roots? Or maybe you've always wondered about the origins of your family's blonde hair or blue eyes share your stories. We'd love to hear them. And don't forget, if you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe for more content, and hit the notification bell so you never miss an upload. Thanks for watching, and Farvel for new. Goodbye for now.